Hi everyone. Welcome to my test bench where tonight I'm doing final tests on Ken's Quadrifier brand TASSB 93V-12A pellet stove controller. This is one that Ken sent me on behalf of one of his customers and when I received it it was completely dead. So let me go ahead and turn it on and when I do I expect to see three lights come on. There they are. The, this first light here simulates the heater element. The second light simulates the combustion fan, the exhaust fan, and the third light in yellow simulates the auger. So what we're going to do here is we're going to wait about three minutes for the auger motor to become shut off because I'm simulating a room of 72 degrees Fahrenheit here. And I am calling for heat with the thermostat. So we can see that I'm calling for heat because I've got a little green light here that is on top, top left hand corner. So as we wait for this, I'll explain a few things that I've done, which you will not see in this video. One of them is to test out and confirm the functionality of the timeout circuit in case there is no fire, but we're calling for heat. So if, for instance, we're calling for heat and the thermostat or not the thermostat, but the thermocouple is not seeing an increase in temperature and it doesn't reach the 1200 degrees Fahrenheit in about 25 minutes approximately, then it will turn off all three lights. We're not going to see that in this video, but I confirmed it by cycling through that time period three or four times already and I'm satisfied that it's all functional. So what we're waiting on here now is for the auger timer to time out. So we're at... Um, room temperature and we've turned on our fire we're calling for heat but after about two and a half to three minutes the auger motor should shut off that's the timer circuit within the controller that will shut off the auger so that we don't just continually feed pellets into the pot while we're trying to ignite it so we're not our temperature is being simulated still at room temperature so the heater element is on but it's not hot enough to ignite the pellet load that is in the, in the pot and of course we don't want to just overload the pellet pot which which is why we're going to shortly see the auger lamp go off so we'll just wait for that to happen once that happens we're going to start increasing the there it is we just saw it there once now that we're at this point we're going to increase the temperature of the fire so as what the thermocouple sees and at the same time we're going to monitor the little green light here and as I get to about 200 as I noted the green light should come on there it is it came on so what it did is it turned on the auger once again so we can continue feeding more pellets and the fire should be roaring even more and we'll stay in this mode until we reach 1200 degrees Fahrenheit at which point the red light will come on and the heater element will finally shut off, no longer required because the fire is hot enough to sustain itself, providing we continue to feed pellets. That means there has to continue to be enough pellets in the, in the pit and the auger motor needs to be driving pellets, which we'll see is happening. So we're at 1100, we're about to shut, 1100, we're about to switch over to, into the red. And if I look over, we do see that the red light is now on. I'll switch it back. So that's it. It's all functional. We see the auger motor is now running full time, which is what happens with this type of controller. It's not cycled on and off. And we see the exhaust fan running. We don't see the convection fan, the red one, come on because that circuit is controlled exclusively by the furnace itself. The furnace has temperature switches inside that control uh, when that fan comes on and it has nothing to do with the circuit. It depends on the... Um, the, the temperature of the, the burn box to be hot enough so that it can blow hot air into the room. So there we have it. We've tested all the functionality of this controller. I'll ramp down the temperature a little bit and we'll see the uh, heater element possibly come back on. I'll ramp that down. But from what I can tell here, Ken, everything here is functional completely. Um, it took me a little while to get to it, but uh, thanks for your patience. I appreciate it very much. Uh, I'll return this to you now, and when you install it in your customer stove, uh, if you have any issues, make sure you let me know, and we'll work through them. But from uh, my point of view and from my testing, everything here is fully functional. All right. Uh, for those of you who are viewers, I want to thank you very much for sitting through this, and I hope you enjoyed it. 
Uh, if you did, please uh, give the video a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to my channel as I publish more of these as uh, customers send me their controllers for repairs. Uh, my contact information is in the comments for this video, so feel free to contact me if you have questions about your own Quadrifier stove or other brands of stoves. I can help out with those as well. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it very much, and have a good warm night, everybody. Turning off the controller. Bye-bye.